People often think that medieval warfare was a brutal, soul-destroying and downright barbaric atrocity. But the likes of the developers for Chivalry 2 might have you thinking it was just wholesome fun for all the friends and family. Wanna see? Let's take a look. Initially released in June 2021 on the Epic Store and then unlocked from its exclusivity tether for Steam in June 2022, we thought there's no better time to jump on this game than right now. As big fans of the original title, we were looking forward to getting game time on this and sharing our thoughts. Chivalry 2 is a multiplayer online hack and slash medieval war game that can be played in either first or third person. It mainly revolves around melee combat but has a number of ranged options too. Additional tools at your disposal in the form of cavalry, ballistas and more, meaning every battlefield is tackled differently when it comes to strategy. The most striking part of Chivalry 2 is how well they've doubled down on the combat mechanics from the first title. And by that I mean introduced accidental features as core mechanics to this game. A smashing idea because a number of them were what made Chivalry what it was, giving it character not found in most other similar games. The main example of this is dragging, where you turn with your weapon to hit multiple areas in one swing, or even using it to get your attack out quicker. If you start your swing and turn with it, you can hit the enemy with the start of the swing rather than the end of it. The tutorial was the most adequate we've come across for this type of game, not only going through the mechanics well, but explaining the context that they would benefit from if used. If you enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, or even subscribe to the channel. We tried to get ourselves familiar with everything Chivalry 2 had to offer, and here are our thoughts. Medieval fighting games like Mordow and Chivalry always seem to find themselves teetering between the lines of skill-based enjoyable and competitive fun, and irritating cheese fueled frustration. When developers get it wrong, players generally quit before getting the hang of the nuance of the mechanics. But when they get it right, they give the genre an addictive battlefield that players will keep coming back to. This almost always comes down to how the game's fighting mechanics work, the feel of the weapons and movements, how much cheese you can find within the parameters of those mechanics, and how easy or difficult the cheese is to counter. In Mordau, this was fairly well balanced, but it was still a frustrating experience for quite a lot of players. And the blocking and the stamina mechanics for me personally really weren't quite there. Combining that with the level design, it meant a lot of players didn't feel the pull to come back over and over again. However, Chivalry 2 seems to have come as close as I've seen to a fun, satisfying and engaging experience, while at the same time being challenging enough to push you to learn the mechanics better, pick your fights better and generally not be bad. I love the blocking mechanics in this game, and as an aggressive player I tend to throw myself into objectives to try and keep as many enemy players as busy as possible while my teammates can get a flank or complete the objective. So for me, the ability to hold block and counter blocked hits makes my style of play a lot more feasible in this game than in other games in the genre. And while trying to 1vx will often end up with you getting yourself killed, Chivalry 2, more than any other game in the genre, feels like you can 1vx and come out on top if you're good enough. Generally, I felt that the mechanics feel excellent. They feel smooth and most importantly, they feel fair. Whenever I lost a fight, it felt like I deserved to lose. Whether it's because I missed an attack, missed time to dodge, took on too many players at once, or just simply got my positioning completely wrong. And on the other side of the coin, when you win, it feels like you should have won. Not because of cheese or bugs or exploits, but because you outplayed your opponent. And while the mechanics are good, they're not the only part of the story about why I love Chivalry 2. The map design itself is also excellent. Each map is unique and feels completely different. Mixing up open field battles, castle sieges, prison breaks and other objective and open battle type mission maps. And it all comes together to create a varied and enjoyable player experience, where you're always doing something a little different, which to me is critical for replayability and player retention. One thing I really loved were the phase style maps where one team attacked and one team defended. And as the attackers, as you progress, you move through phase after phase until you win. I felt that these particular games really made you play the objective and because the objectives were all different, they kept the gameplay loop fun and exciting. Outside of these core areas of the game, you do have some customization options, allowing you to change how you look and giving you something to work towards as you unlock different items at different levels. The more you play, the more weapons and gear you unlock, allowing you to be more flexible with what you deploy with and helping you narrow down which weapons really suit your playstyle. And you will develop your own playstyle. 
Whenever Nex and I would put on opposing teams without even knowing what the other person looked like, eventually we started to know when we were fighting each other, simply because of the way we both played. The aspect of Chivalry 2 that stands out most for me is how well they've coupled a mechanically high skill ceiling with a very approachable gameplay experience for the newbies. Although there are many attributes to being good in this game, it kind of feels like timing is the main aspect to master over, say, reflex. You see this particularly with the block mechanics. Put simply, holding block will block any attack as long as you have stamina left, and it's what you time afterwards that will decide whether you gain the advantage from there. Compare this to directional blocking, where you first need to read the opponent's specific attacks, such as in Mordow or For Honor, and you may have a better understanding of where the approach to combat differs between games. I must say, after playing so much of the other titles, and not so much Chivalry for a number of years, I was initially disappointed with the catch-all block mechanic. But after a load of playtime, it felt like it opened up the rest of the combat experience to the player, as you get to focus on what you do off-block, rather than the success of the block itself. I must say I enjoy being an archer noob from time to time. Not something you want to say out loud to the medieval warfare hack and slash community, but the smoothness of the ranged options were really pleasurable to play. It highlighted the importance of focusing on lower armoured enemies while managing the projectile drop over long distances. The maps had well placed ammo chests too. It wasn't just a case of getting through your arrows before you had to be a substandard footman, die and respawn with arrows again. But in fact you could roam to various positions keeping your arrow stocks high as you go. The maps were generally all super impressive, capturing the feel of a large-scale battle, with bright, beautiful environments and a good variety of objectives as you push through a landscape that evolves in line with the progress of the battle. At this time, it's worth pointing out that if your mates are split between owning the game on the Epic Store and Steam, you'll be unable to party up, similarly to if you're split across consoles. If this is you, then you'll have to resort to going to the server list only, noting the name and then all jumping on the same one, rather than the normal options of queuing for a game. Friendly fire will occur aplenty, including some that would pass as spies working for the other side at times. And finally, if you're into roleplay, there are emotes and many ways to show expression to others. I like that it exists and is encouraged through the game, although it's not an aspect I've particularly taken part in. I must say right now this is my favourite title of its genre, and despite the issues of partying up, is a welcome sequel to Chivalry 1. But does it compare to the likes of Mordell or For Honor? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one. Go Team Blue. Team Blue. Oh, you're third already. Nice. Team Blue. Oh, we gotta kill that guy. Nice. Let's do it. I like this map. What weapon are you rocking? Danax Messer. Danax Messer. We must push those siege towers. Why would you switch? In what situations would you switch between them? Um. Oh no. I'm getting attacked on two sides. Ah. Uh, um. If I throw my axe. Oh sure. Oh mate, sorry. I just hit my team. We gotta push these siege towers, man. Oh, just remember. up a throwing knife and then realized I had nothing to block with and people started running at me. <laughs> You're using the Mesa? Yeah. Where are you at? Um, next left to that. Left hand side or right large, hand side? Uh, left hand side. Yes.
basically stay left side. Yeah, I'm gonna stay left for now. Oh, nice hit. Oh, he did it again. Have you, have you got a helmet on? Uh, I don't even know. But this guy with a spear, that two handed spear is pretty good. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. He kept getting in before me. So many just then, man. <clears throat> yeah, it's annoying that we can't see our names or anything. Like, yeah. You know what? It might just be because we, we can't add each other to friends list. That's exactly what it is. Well, I, I say exactly. I imagine that's Most what it is. Most likely it's what it is, yeah. battle with that guy. Did you die? Yeah, then I lost. <laughs> Alright, I'm spawning on right side. There's plenty of reds coming. So I'm going to go on right. So it doesn't feel the same as it did the, um, on Monday. It feels like it's really inconsistent. Oh, I hope that wasn't the update. It's feeling better <laughs> than ever. All right, I'm going left side. Right side's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty much free. Spears. Yeah, the spear, that two handed spear. Go on. I'm up on the left hand side. Okay, I'm going up on the left as well. Just throw a rock at me. Um, are you wearing a specific hat? Yeah, I'm wearing like a island I hat. I see you, I see you, okay. I thought that was he. Oh, I just died, fire. you're right at fire, fire, fire. No, I'm going to have catch fire at night. The wall is nearly ours. I'm just getting healed, nice. Did you say you died? Um, where you were fighting at that particular moment, yeah.
No, I'm pushing through over the next wall. Nice. Skirmish a bit. Oh, if I, I hate holding it down. If I hadn't held that down, I would have got that guy. Oh, sorry, mate. What do you look like? Uh, I look like I've got... You got one of those bucket helms on? Bucket head, yeah. Yeah, I've literally just got like a little waste paper thing on my head. Nice. Bit of comedy for the battlefield. Yeah, man. Messer. Are you using a messer? Yes. I think you just hit me. You were attacking that guy. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's ganged up on that dude. You're the guy oh. I must have said sorry to then. Yeah. Here you go. Let's, let's get in on some action. It's healing. Same. Oh, what the hell? Why, why do I keep losing my... I literally keep just stamina. It was full. I'm with you, I'm with you. Oh, nice. oh. to the walls of their keep. Pushing down the right hand side. Alright, I'm away. Oh! Like a blister. In your line of fire, by the way. Are almost identical. How oh, did I survive that? Do you 
prefer the message of the uh, Dane accent now. I think so. It's a bit more all round. It is, yeah. But it could just be my perception I... of knowing that the Dane axe is like wood with a haft at the end. So it makes me use it differently. You know what I mean? Like I'm really u utilizing the length of the sword. Yeah, I went through a phase of using it loads, and then I kind of, I kind of like the flavor of the Dane Axe more. Yeah. I have to say, yeah, the most satisfying kills have come from the Dane Axe so far. Ping is four. It's incredible. You hosting? <laughs> That's behind you. Nice. Yeet. Oh. Nice. Well done. That hurt. Him once. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's healing. There's a bit of nuance to the kicking I'm not really getting. Sometimes it doesn't stun them enough, but yeah. occasionally you get given like more than enough time to do something. I don't quite know why some kicks are different to others. I bet kicking heavier armored people is a bit more disruptive. Yeah, probably. Under the bit where um, they're hanging each other. Oh, that's a bad place to be in that. Oh, it got up, nice. I just healed. <laughs> the skill in this kind of battle was really about <laughs> flanking enemies. Is, yeah. just getting their shots in. It really just feels like we're winning the war. Like, we're generally just coming on top in the fights as a team. Yeah, yeah. That in every single thing.
Hey, I got my first bit of harassment. Nice. What did he say? He said, kill yourself. You fat Next, grease. you're a fat, greasy, gay, bad word. Yeah. I am wrecking him, though. Badly. Oh, do you keep coming out on top? Yeah. It's awesome that you can commend a player as well when they kill you. Yeah, I like that. Ow, I'm on your team, you. Some guy just tried to like 1v1 me. Oh, we, we both uh, came quite close to the top. Yeah, he smashed it. <laughs> 